So as you can see, my power board is in. It's rock solid. All my positive is over here. My negatives are down there. And I've got my breakers. These breakers right now are sort of stand-in. They're placeholders. I know I need some breakers and that's where I'm gonna put them. Uh, I've committed to the 50 amp. The 50 amp breaker takes care of my DC house. The entire load on my DC panel, 50 amp breaker number four wire. The 60 amp is gonna be for my DC to DC charger. Uh, 40 amp would be the other side of the DC to DC charger. And then these two 30s would be for my solar panels. Now this is where uh, we're gonna have a discussion today. I'm running three 100 watt solar panels down each side of this van roof on the outside flanking the two fans and the air conditioner. 300 watts, 300 watts on a side for a total of 600 watts. Uh, there's a couple of ways I can wire those up. I can run those in series and then parallel. So each 300 watt string is in series and then I parallel them down. Keeps the amps low, sends the voltage up. It has its advantages. Uh, one concern with that is I would want to get a, uh, a proper solar disconnect breaker that can handle that voltage. These blue C breakers can only handle up to 48 volts. The other option uh, is the one that I've used on my previous three vans. Three vans that are out there, I ran them in parallel. So that would be 300 watts in parallel, 300 watts in parallel. Bring them down to two separate solar controllers. So at that point, my 30 amp breakers are more than sufficient to cover each of those 300 watt legs. And the reason I'd like to do that is the one, there's a Renogy 50 amp DC to DC charger that has an MPPT controller on board, one unit. I put one in my pleasure way in the upfit. It was a 30 amp version. Coming through this dual system, the Renogy, this is an MPPT controller for my solar, as well as a DC to DC charger from my alternator. It's an all-in-one unit, max of 400 watts. They also make a 50 amp. I wish Victron would catch up and provide some, some similar kind of a product because I really like it. It's, it's very efficient and compact. Yes, it hurts our redundancy, but I'm gonna get to that. So I would put in a 50 amp DC to DC charger with the MPPT. So now that covers one leg and the charging from the alternator. Then I would get another Victron, uh, I'm sorry, Renogy MPPT and run that off the other breaker. So I'd have my two solar legs coming down into two separate controllers and the one controller also takes care of the alternator feed. I like that setup. I'm going to be putting those uh, panels into a combiner box up on the roof anyway. So if, uh, if that system proves to be less than optimal, I can always just change it in the controller, in the combiner box and then down here. What do you think? Which way should I go? Should I do series parallel into one controller with high voltage, uh, upwards of 60, 65 volts? Or do I bring each of these legs down 12 volt parallel two controllers, which is the way I'm inclined to go. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to tell you and show you here, oh, there was some confusion on the, uh, on the negatives in my uh, Wednesday video. What I do is from my breaker panel, my DC loads, everything that I run in this van, not AC, DC, all the DC grounds, negatives, come back to this bus, every one. Then I send a single four aught ground to the chassis. So everything's grounded to that negative bus. Uh, and that is instead of zipping in little ground points all over the van, which the manufacturer does. There's ground points all over the van. And the other thing I do uh, that I can actually be absolutely sure of is every ground that I install I check its impedance, not impotence, impedance. Uh, this is a shitty little screw insert and I've got zero impedance. So I do that with every ground that I run just to make sure I got a good clean continuity, good connection.
So I hope that clears that up. Now the next thing I wanted to show you, a lot of this stuff is not set in place yet. Uh, right here, this inverter for instance, uh, if you disconnect the inverter connections, and I wouldn't connect them from the buses, I'd disconnect them out here, then this inverter, which is 75 pounds, I can't tell you how many times this thing has pinched my fingers. Yeah. As I've been moving it around. But anyway, oh, it did it again. Ah. Okay. This is what I want to show you. These, this is my AC in from shore power and then AC out to my panel. So there's two things I want to talk about here. The first is that when you're on shore power, uh, I send all of the AC outlets through the inverter. All the AC that comes in shore power, 30 amps, goes through this inverter. And the advantage to that is it allows every outlet in the van to be accessible when you're on shore power or on the inverter. If you notice in a lot of vans that are manufactured, they'll provide you two or three outlets on the inverter, two or three outlets on shore power. Well, in this van, everything's on. Now, the other thing I want to show you is this is what I would call a service loop. I left myself enough slack in these lines that I could do just what you saw me do, move the inverter. If I had to get better access to anything, get the battery out, replace the inverter, uh, I get it out into an area where I can work on it and then put it back. So when you're doing your installs, uh, and this could hold true for a lot of the devices you put in the van, leave yourself a service loop, even in water and, and the, the hydronic systems and whatnot. Leave enough hose so you can move things. Next week, I will demonstrate the how and why of my wire lug crimping tool and explain my closed loop water heating system. Subscribe now so you don't miss out.